Hi everybody, my name is Jan Dufour and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator coming to you from just outside of Louisville, Kentucky. Today I'm going to show you a bunch of different things. So this video might be a little bit longer than you're used to. I hope you'll stick with me um, while I make it through all of the things I want to show you. Basically, the premise of this one is how easy you can make cards without having to think about it a lot or to have to stamp a lot. Um, by getting these things that Stampin' Up! has called Memories and More Cards and Memory and More's Cards and Envelopes. Um, and essentially what that is, is, um, and I always buy one card pack and two envelopes because I can make, there's, there's 20 uh, beautiful cards, beautiful envelopes, I'll show you in, in a minute. Um, and there's, like I've just set out 30 different ones, so I always want to have a little bit more. But essentially, what they are is um, a four by six card, which is a little bit larger than our A2, um, but smaller than an A7. So it's um, six by four. And then you have these beautiful envelopes that have gold on them. Um, and to be honest, when I put them away, if you know, if you've been following it at all, or even if you haven't, um, I put each card that I make into a um, envelope, uh, plastic envelope that I buy from Clear Bags, and I'll I'll put the different ones down below um, to preserve them, so that when people are thumbing through cards, if they're buying them, if I'm selling them somewhere, or if I'm giving them away and people are, I make boxes and every Christmas they get a ton of cards from me um, so that they don't get damaged, um, basically, is what I'm getting at. So, um, and, you know, if you want to sell them, what a, a beautiful way to present the, uh, the card. So, long story short, when I got all of these cards, and they're essentially made for scrapbooking, but just by kind of what the sayings are or um, the parts that you can see, you can pretty much guess that you'll be able to come up with a bunch of cards. So for example, and you get two of every card. So this is thinking of you, obviously, I can make two thinking of you cards, or if I want to, I can make one thinking of you card and use the background for that for something else. Um, this is enjoy your day, best day ever. You can make a um, celebratory or um, birthday card uh, surrounded by goodness. Um, uh, you can, you know, put faith and uh, faith over fear. The, the stamp that I'm using for sentiments is called Charming Sentiments. And there's a ton of sentiments. And I think one of the best things along with it having tons of sentiments is it comes with a die cut. So all of these things can be cut out, um, so, which just makes them look so good. And then in addition to the cutouts, there's some additional ones um, for other than the phrases that don't have stamps, like the birthday candles and hearts and stars and that kind of thing. Um, so let me put this away. There's 30. Um, different ones. It's called Sentiment Silhouettes. And I took a picture of it um, and put it in here so that if I have one missing, I know which one it is. Um, okay. And so with any sentiments that you have, it doesn't have to be this one, but I'm using this one almost exclusively. It fits with everything that I've got here. So um, it, it's the little things, which is perfect for the saying, so tiny, so precious. Um, or uh, babies are a blessing. That is a little thing. Um, this one says congratulations. And as you can see, some of these are three by four cards, and some of them are mm, uh, six by four. Um, so, but there's two of each ones anyway. Um, these are the days which you can make for birthday or just hi, how are you? You make me smile, sending good vibes, life is better uh, with you, which is a, a really cool anniversary one. Um, when we have each other, we have everything. Another maybe anniversary card. Loving this life of ours, which, you know, can be whatever. Again, I'm doing anniversary because I have zero anniversary cards. Um, and today's memories are tomorrow's moments. Um, and in addition to that, 
I have, so I'm gonna put these aside because I'm not using them at all today. Um, in addition, there are some that I personally didn't necessarily want to make, although thank, thankful for your um, for this wonderfully or, ordinary day can be definitely sent to someone who's been um, recovering from an illness. But again, the back sides are beautiful too. Um, and then this one, I love the back. This one says good times with you, which again, you can use either side, but I've kind of set them aside as, oh, these would make pretty backings. Um, your kindness amazes me, which is definitely something appropriate um, for a card. Uh, these are just two-sided pretty cards. So these are the small ones that I haven't decided to use. Um, this one says, see the good in all things, which is a perfectly fine side, but I love the background. So I'll be using that. So very lovely would be um, something for an engagement maybe or whatever. I'm gonna show you how to make a gift pocket. This side would work well for that. You could leave your message on that. And then in addition, you get four, there are two of each. Um, I, I hate to call them stickers because they're cardstock stickers, but just all kinds of little things that you can put um, on the inside, on the outside, wherever. So I'm not even counting these. And of the ones that I set aside, I have 30 cards. So as you can see, you can make a whole lot and it doesn't take a whole long time. Um, the first one I'm gonna show you is this one, which um, for me, when I make an anniversary card or a wedding card, um, even a sympathy card, I like it to have a little bit of shine. So I've used the brushed copper. Um, it says everything beautiful starts with love. And on the inside, I've made, <laughs> I have I have a Starbucks coffee card in here, which is probably not appropriate for this particular card. That's the only one I had. Uh, but I made a pocket card in there with a rounded edge. I'm gonna show you another one in the other card, a little bit different, which, oh, by the way, takes this and you just trim off a little bit. Not this one, because we're using it for the front, but um, this one, which had three shells on it and yeah, yeah, but I'm using this to make it. So let me show you again, first of all, we're using um, brushed copper, any metallic. This is um, uh, evening evergreen. And let me tell you the sizes, it'll all be below um, my post. It'll either take you, you I'll leave you a, a link to my blog. That's where all of the, the card sizes will be. But um, let's see, for this card, the brushed copper is three and three quarters by five and three quarters. The evening evergreen is three and a quarter by five and a quarter. Um, and the gift card holder always, regardless of how you make it, is three, which is the size it is across, three by three and three eighths. So you're just cutting off a little bit, which actually looks like this size, which you can use for sentiment. So um, I just put that aside for there. Um, the interesting thing is, I don't know if you've noticed, but I used the white background. So instead of using the card in this manner, which is the way it's meant to be, I flipped it around so I could use the white background and then this would be on the inside. So that's also a choice that you have. This um, particular Memories and More is textured chic, which isn't that easy to say. So let me put this aside. Again, I have all of the measurements below my um, linked to my blog. So I'm just gonna quickly, because we are um, trying not to take forever, um, because I'll be sh showing you a lot of different things. For instance, how to make a gift card holder. Um, because this is a heavy metal, <laughs> heavy metal, I'm going ahead and I put a little bit of extra on there. And I'm showing a little bit more of this. A lot of times when I do a metallic, I only show a very thin layer, but I decided that um, with the white, I wanted to have a little bit extra showing. So we are gonna place that here. And then, oops, I forgot. Ugh, I need my ribbon. 
which I have apparently, oh, no, lost, um, which I'm using soft succulent, which is obviously darker than that. It's a contrast. Um, I'm going to lift this up because I want to put the ribbon underneath there. Uh, and normally I leave it on the ribbon, but uh, on the bolt, but I'm just going to cut it for ease of working on a a video. I'm not as good with ribbon <laughs> as some other things I can do well. Um, okay, and then we want to make sure that the ribbon is going to be below that. So good thing I checked because it is not. And pull it down. Come on, baby girl. Do, do, do. All right, I think that'll be all right. Yes. Um, and then I'm going to tie a, a bow hopefully on the first try, kind of make the plus sign. And uh, in our new mini catalog, um, also used to be known as the holiday catalog, but um, it's July through December, there's an accessory kit for embossing, which has our embossing buddy that we brought back, a tray so they can catch all of the spill for the powder, a brush to help brush it off, and a pair of reversible tweezers. So I was really happy to see that. And if I can get my thumbs, my thumbs to work here. <laughs> Apparently not. Try that again. I am tolerant of bows. <laughs> I guess is the best way to put it. I uh I don't actually mind making the bows, but I, I don't like to do it while I'm uh, under pressure. <laughs> so let me get this sussed out a little bit so it doesn't look quite so big and awkward. And we'll pull each one in and then pull it tight. And then one trick I did learn though, it, I mean, you can play with this for days to get it to sit just the way you want to. I'm too impatient for that. I have other things I wanna do. So um, I'm going to show you a little trick here. Um, I use a glue dot <laughs> and I might use more than one and I kind of roll it so that it's not too, too big. And then wherever I'm having the hard time, it's usually this one, because it won't sit the way I want it to. And I kind of tuck it up underneath the both this piece of the ribbon and this part of the bow. And then I'm usually a lot happier. If this one's sticking up too far, you know what? Two glue dots is not expensive. So we'll go with that. And I will be much happier and I will stop playing with the bow. There, looky that. Look what it does when it wants to be nice. <laughs> and then we put this on. And this is just cardstock to cardstock, so it doesn't really need very much adhesive. A lot of times I will use liquid adhesive. That is my adhesive of choice, um, but not with metallic. Um, I just find sometimes it even leaves a mark, which obviously you don't want. Um, so here's the front of the card. Was that fast or what? Yes, I had the paper cut first, but it does not take that long to cut out the paper. And if you're making two at a time, it goes even faster. So for the inside, now let's make this. Now, sometimes these have cute little, I'll show you another one. I didn't even show you this one. Come on, baby. I'm having a hard time picking things up here. So sometimes it'll have something sweet like that. So you want to make sure well, the width would be right anyway, but you want to take the length off of this so that you can keep that pretty pretty thing up there. Um, so anyway, it has to be three inches, which it, it is. Let me get this on camera. It has to be three inches, and it's by three and three-eighths, and it doesn't matter um, what I'm cutting off because it doesn't show. Now, this does matter. You want to score. Now you can use your simply score. If I'm doing a bunch of them, I would use my simply score. I think it's more accurate. Um, I'm less likely to jump the track. I think I want the lighter edge up on top. So all you're going to do is go one quarter of an inch. Make sure you're not using your cutting blade 
and score one quarter of an inch on three sides, the two sides and the bottom. And then one more. And while I have this out, I'm gonna go ahead and mark the center because this first one is going to have, and it doesn't matter what you mark it with because it's coming off, um, because the first one's gonna have that rounded um, edge, the one you typically see. Um, I'm gonna put this away. I am going to take anything. Look, look at all your punches. Find something that has a curve. Um, if you have a circle, you could do it with a small circle. Um, you could do it with the half of an oval there. I mean, you can do it with a lot of things, but if I'm just wanting to take out a little piece, the reason I mark the center is because, and let me put this close, I want that to be in the center. You, you can go a little bit this way, a little bit. It, it doesn't really matter. All you're trying to give it is a little bit of, let me get this centered, a little bit of thumb space. I hope that and so then I pop that out. Doesn't that make a cute little corner uh, around it out? And then I will burnish this in a moment, but right now I'm just kind of folding. And then um, our, ta our tear and tape, which I also like to use for this type of thing, boxes and, uh, and stuff, and I don't really need extra time, is a little bit wide. So what I do, if you have, Dinner, of course, you could always do that, but this also works very well. I'm just going to go ahead. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just try to catch one on my finger, put the rest of it behind, and just cut up. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're not going to see it. And then I'm just going to cut that off. Let's see if I estimated about the right amount. This up here. Now it would help if I put my glasses on with it. I don't know. Sometimes it does. Oops, and then there's one thing I forgot to tell you. You wanna trim the corners. Um, whichever side you can see it better on, but basically, I mean, I'm, I'm mitering this way and this way. So why bother with doing it twice? I just cut across the bottom. And we'll do it this way. You want to keep the little bit of the corner inside. Um, let's see, we got it on there. We'll put it on here. The other thing you can do if you don't want to mess with cutting the tape and you don't have a thinner tape, um, you can also, well, I'll throw this away so I can show you. You can also go ahead, lay it down with, um, I have two of them. You'd think I'd be able to find it when I want it. Um, here, the silicone mat. You can also put, put this on a silicone mat. Go ahead and lay down the full thing. It's okay if it's sticking over because the silicone mat will save you from it being messy. When you take it off, you take this off you can see that it's hanging over just I wouldn't roll it around I would roll it back on itself that works as well um, so let me go ahead and take off the other pieces I'm acting like Eleanor Burns that she's the lady that did quilts in a day um, throwing my pieces everywhere all right so we're gonna Put these in the right spot so that I can pull it down where I want it. And that's looking good. Now I can burnish it down. And I don't have another credit card, so I can't do that. But I can show you something like that. And so this has got a little bit of a thumb so that you can pull it out. Um, and if you want to, you can put a nice little saying on there. Um, I did on my other one, so I'm going to show you another trick. I'll put this away for now. Um, 
because I'm going to use a lot of these sentiments, I made a template, which you all know I make tons of these for everything. Um, it just makes life easier because I do everything in multiples. Um, I literally laid every single one down, figured out which one it was. So I put at least the beginning of what the wording was, if you can see that a little bit better, maybe. Um, and then I know for, I went ahead, I'm going to be doing this particular one multiple times. Um, so I went ahead and um, punched out, or not punched out, I die cut uh, quite a few of these. And then you want to just get your die in the right spot. So I basically, I'll take it off so you can believe me that I really did this. Um, I just go ahead, you wiggle it, wiggle it so it, it fits in there. And then you do want to check it so that it's not off centered a little bit. So I stuck a, just a piece of paper in there. Um, and we'll use Evening Evergreen. And I'm just, this is just my checking one. And of course it's perfect. So now it doesn't matter about this. So now I can take all of these ones that I've die cut Keep this up in the corner you can use a magnet if you want to and just settle these things inside and then when you stamp it will be right where it's supposed to be every time so we'll take this one out and then we'll put another one in um because i need another one for the other card because i'm kind of doing the same thing Alrighty, I think it might be a little bit higher and I didn't pay attention. A little higher than I wanted, but that's okay. You get the idea. No, actually it's pretty good. All right, so I'll have two, two phrases, one for this time, one for next time. And you'll notice it's hanging it off. It doesn't matter, just put it upside down, put it sideways, put however, just so that you know it's always in the corner, not going anywhere. And I'll save these for another time. All right, so let me close this up. In the other one, since I had um, some pieces that I cut off with the gold, if I can find the pieces. If you want to, you can use some, some of the, the little slices you may have cut off. Um, and I just kind of made it at an angle and then that and maybe a little bit longer on this one see if I like that and then oops, I'm just playing here there you go and you can lay it down however you want you don't have to put anything in the back of it but that one's all set to go and you saw how easy and fast that was and especially again you'll be making two i'll slide this in here um and the reason the reason i put it whoops i did do it that backwards i put the envelope with the pretty stuff on the on the back but on the inside or outside rather so that People can see the card and they can see how pretty the envelope is as well. All right, so our next one is gonna be very similar. Um, although I made, oops, is this one I just did? Yeah, that's the one I just did, good for me. All right, where'd my other one go? Let me get rid of this. Oops, no, oh, here it is, the. So here's my next one, this was a, an anniversary one. I didn't have, I used the, the colored uh, colored section of the card for the front, so it's plain white inside. So what I ended up doing was picking another one that I liked the design, but not so much the other side, whatever it was. It could have been another design. It could have been a phrase or whatever. Um, but I went ahead and utilized um, the inside and put a different, oh yeah. I, this one is right here right now, which can come in handy and may be very useful, but I really like this. So 
um, we'll go ahead and put that on the inside. And again, it's cardstock to cardstock. So I'll just lay this down. All right. And then um, for the inside card, again, this one is, I mean, it's very cute. Um, and I think it would look nice um, on this. It brings out the yellow. So we'll go ahead and make that again. Again, it's three by three and three eighths. And of course, I'm not gonna cut this side because that's the pretty side. Then I have to remember not to cut the rest of it and just score it on three sides. And I'm not gonna put this one, glue it together and make you watch me cut tape again. Um, but I did want to show you a different look, if you will, um, and what you can do to make it look like that. Um, so this will be folded and burnished, folded and burnished, folded and burnished. You can see this side very well, usually. You can cut those off. All right, we'll get that out of the way. I know it looks nicer if I make everything neat, but instead of making it square or, or cutting this part out, you can take anything round. Um, your layering ovals work. I found that our, our uh, little containers that different things come in, ooh, gold leaf, that'll look cute. Um, if you bump up the edge to the folded edge, so you put it right there and then up there the same, Take a pen and just start at the center and just do that part of it. Open it up. Um, and then, now I, I know you're all thinking, if she cut that with an, a pink pen, uh, they're friction pens. It's the only kind of pen I use, um, which means they're erasable. So any of the pink I got on there is easy to remove. I use them for everything. Um, okay, so now when you put the, the tape on the holder, it will be like this. And as you can see, it you don't need a, a thumb section because this is enough. And, and it can be on either side, just whatever happens to be working. Um, and again, on this one, I did do some little trails of, um, but I, I think with, with that, the other thing I did, where, oh, I think, I think I like this one better. So I think I will pop, and be aware, you don't want too much popping up. So on the front of this, there's, everything is flat. So on the inside, when I popped up this part of it, it's not too much. So I think that's what I'm gonna do, is go ahead and use some Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm thinking, I'm gonna think four because people will be pushing on that probably when they um, are moving the card in and out. And of course showing everybody what a wonderful job you did. <laughs> and then again, I wanna make sure I'm getting it where I want it with the sides folded in since I don't have it laying down yet. You could even use uh, glue. Uh, for this, this would hold it because again, it's um, cardstock to cardstock, but I don't wanna keep you any longer than I have to um, because I know that we have had a lot of time. Oops, I'm gonna want something hard underneath with this when I put this on. All right. It just helps adhere if you have something hard to press on and then especially with the metallic not so much with the cardstock oh <laughs> I did a good job I did it the same way I did the other one okay so we'll find out can she lift it up and the answer is yes she can if you haven't killed it too much with a lot of glue and a lot of pressing you can lift this up. 
momentarily for a little while. Eventually, it uh, becomes very permanent. And sometimes even it can't be rescued. But I'm just lucky today because I'm on... Yep, and it's still got all its glue on it, so we're all good. Um, this one's got a much narrower border. Again, I will have all of the measurements for this one as well. And then this was a four by six card, if you'll recall. And I just ended up um, wanting this one to be, and again, these measurements can be anything that you want them to be, but I ended up cutting this three and a quarter by five and a quarter. And I just literally took a little bit off the top, a little bit off the bottom, a little bit on the sides until I got it so that I liked the border that it presented. Um, and then again, because this is too metallic, I'm going to put three, although it sticks very well. If three sides are right, the fourth side will be two. Another one of my little sayings. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just use some two-way or four-way glue. What do they call it? Two-way glue. Multi-purpose two-way glue. And if you ever wanted to know, trivia night, why they call it two-way glue, even though nobody ever uses the other one. Lay this down and hold that. It's because the bottom of this bottle has a wide applicator. I've never met anybody who uses it. I think if you need that much glue, <laughs> you should be using another method. Um, and then I will use my bone folder on this a little bit. When you bone fold um, cardstock into glue, into more cardstock, you can get a little bit to come out, um, but it also makes it bond with the paper. So it is much closer to staying together. And there's our second card. Um, like I said, you can get 30 cards by using two of the envelope and card sets and one of the memories and more little cards and still have lots left over. Um, and it comes out to a little less than a dollar a card um, when you do it that way. So, because uh, these are 10, so it'd be 20, and then this is 12, so it'd be 34. And I get 30 cards without trying, and that's using two on each card. So if you got the DSP to go with it, um, you could stretch it even further and certainly come up with 40 cards. So I hope you enjoyed everything. Remember right now, this is uh, July 20th, 2022, and we're in the midst of celebration. Um, that means for every $50 you um, purchase either from the mini catalog or from the annual catalog. There are things in here that you can get as um, free uh, with a $50 purchase. So if you made a $100 purchase, you could get both the hippo and the hippo dies. Um, some of them are, these are all 50. Uh, unfortunately, the pool party and soft sea foam cards and envelopes are now out. Uh, this is only as long as um, things last. This is an amazing stamp set um, with so many phrases that you can put together. It's really fun. That is a $100 purchase. Um, this is a $100 purchase, or um, it's not, I say purchase. It's a, a reward for a $100 order. Um, and it matches with a, our tree um, set that is in the the mini catalog. So that you can buy anytime. This is only while supplies last, but it makes such cute things. Um, and then if you host, you get this perfect pomegranate free. It's not as part of your rewards. It's just free. And then we have a really cool join. Um, and I'm not a salesman and I really don't care if I have a huge team. I love to stamp with people, but for $99, you get $125 worth of stamps and free shipping. So free shipping, that's an 11%. You only have to pay tax. And you get this $45 value uh, planner. And 
I used to be a fanatic planner um, with paper. I'm half paper and half digital. But look at this gorgeous book uh, binder. And it you have 18 months in here. Um, it's it's dated. You don't even have to date it. There's you know all kinds of to-do lists and focuses and reviews and priorities and just all kinds of stuff um, along with all the tabs, some sticker sheets and a whole stamp set that goes with it uh, to mark things like to-do lists and that kind of thing. So if you're at all interested in getting a discount, you get 20% off all of, your, all of your stamps. You never have to sell a thing. You don't ever have to meet a minimum if you don't want to. There's no penalty for you to drop. Um, I certainly wouldn't hold it against you. Uh, my sister's joined and dropped twice <laughs> under me. So uh, it's it's not a problem, but it's a great way if you do want to just um, supply your habit to get a discount. So consider it. You can email me. Um, my website, which will be posted below, is um, stampmesilly.com. It kind of gives you an idea of my personality. My email is jandufor at yahoo.com. My store, if you want to purchase any of these items, is jandufor.stampinup.net. Thanks very much for joining me, and I'm sorry it was a little bit long, but hopefully you got a lot of information. Have a great, great day. Bye.